Are you in love with a man or a monster? I sat across from my therapist and looked straight at her and said, I don't know who I actually am. I don't know if I'm a man or if I'm a monster. She turned to me and she said, maybe you're both. Maybe the person that you are is dependent on how you show up, what you actually do, how you interact with other people. This wasn't the response that I thought I should get from her. This wasn't a response that I was expecting. And I'd stumbled upon this question inside of reading a certain book. The book I have here today, it's called Psychopath Free. And Psychopath Free is a really good book for your healing, for your journey, if you have a lot of questions about dealing with narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, and just toxic people in general. But one of the things that came up as I was reading through this was simply the fact of how I had been controlling, how I'd been manipulating of other people in my life and convincing myself that it wasn't that big of a deal. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse. I provide transformation for women that are trapped in toxic relationships, liberating them from the mindset, from the thought process that currently has them stuck. Simply using some of the same tools and abilities that I've used to transform my life into a life that is connected with my wife, growing and developing in my connection with God, growing and developing inside of how I show up physically, how I show up inside of business, but most of all, transforming how I show up in a healthy way. And you can do that too in your life, knowing that you don't have to be trapped or stuck inside a toxic relationship. But you see, what happened for me was going through and reading through this book, we got to a certain chapter here, which was talking about personalized grooming. And after I read the chapter of personalized grooming, I just had to stop. I stopped reading the book for probably about two weeks, simply because the weight of it was so heavy. There was a piece of me that was running away from, I didn't want to deal with the fact that this was actually true in my life. Of how I was showing up was simply being a monster a manipulative person that was trying to manipulate and control other people for my own gain, for what I wanted in the moment. You see, that's what narcissism is about. It's about using other people to get what you want. Sometimes people view narcissism as being, well, this person is just self-absorbed. They're just obsessed with themselves. Well, that's true to a certain degree. It's more about their image. And that image controls every single thing, controls how they lie how they gaslight, how they manipulate, how they make sure that someone else views or respects them a certain way. I did the same thing inside of grooming. Now, the grooming is this aspect of preparing, of prepping, and of conditioning someone to look, act, or respond a certain way. With specifically, when we talk about grooming inside of narcissistic relationships and these type of toxic relationships, grooming can be setting you up to develop a trauma bond. Now, trauma bond oftentimes can look similar to Stockholm Syndrome, where you've fallen in love with your abuser, with your captor. Uh, it could simply look like an addiction that you can't deal with not being with this person. Every time that you want to leave, you have to keep going back over and over and over again. It can be this piece of an addiction where this person is your validation, your support of knowing who you are. And if you don't have him in your life, well, who are you? All of it is to develop this irrefutable bond that ties you to the toxic person that doesn't let you actually leave him. So when I read through this, there was a couple different things that stuck out. When we look at personalized grooming inside this book, there's six things that it talks about. It talks about we have so much in common. We have the same hopes and dreams. We share the same insecurities. You are beautiful, pumping someone up with praise. I've never felt this way in my life. We are soulmates. Six different things that it initially talks about with this piece of personalized grooming. And with personalized grooming, it's trying to be able to change your perspective. It's trying to be able to change what you're thinking about yourself and about the relationship just in the moment. Now, when I read the chapter, the reason why it stuck out so much to me, the reason why it impacted me in such a negative way that put me back in the therapist's office, questioning myself, asking her, am I a man or am I a monster, was simply the fact that all these aspects of grooming, I didn't know that that's what I was doing. Now, 
pause for a second because some of you are going to think this is my out as being a narcissist. Like, oh, he didn't know it's okay. No, what I'm saying is I'd already put different labels to it. This whole piece of personalized grooming fell under a level of control, of wanting to control other people. And I knew that. But the control of other people, I had told myself for such a long period of time, well, this is love. This is how I convey my care. This is how I make sure that other people know and understand. This is how people become friends. This is how you fall in love. This is how you build relationships. There's all these thoughts and ideas that would go through my head to try to convince me that what I was doing wasn't actually wrong. But in reality, all I was doing was grooming other people. So you have to understand, a narcissist is going to look at you and try to groom you. Try to get you to do the things that he needs you to do in order to get the desired response that he wants from you. Simple as that. Now, some of these, as we talked about, as I read through them, could be developing these similarities. Like you have so much in common with him, and so as a result, you connect so much. I never, I never knew that this person would have the same thoughts, hopes, dreams. And it's like you're almost identical. Two people that are stuck together thinking, wow, this is the most amazing thing ever, which also brings you to having the same hopes and dreams, having the same insecurities, having the same ideas, all of these things. And you look at yourself and you're almost a mere copy of this person. It's not because this other person that you found is exactly the same, even though it seems like it. It's simply because he's learned how to mirror. He's learned how to be able to project things. He's learned how to be able to put on a different mask and look and act a different way just with you. But don't worry, when he leaves you, he'll change his mask for another person. He'll look different, which will confuse you, making you think that it's all your fault and that you weren't good enough. When in reality, it never had anything to do with you at all. It all had to do about him and his image. And so he moves on to the next person to look and act a certain way for what he wants for himself. He'll pretend that he has the same insecurities, the same vulnerabilities. Now, one thing that's interesting is you'll step on the flip side of trying to be able to pump you up. Sometimes we'll look at this at love bombing, like giving you excessive praise, adoration, all these things to make you feel better about yourself. But oftentimes narcissists will do this in the area of calling you beautiful, calling you like certain aspects, certain things about you that they're going to praise and pump up and then putting you down otherwise. So like, consider for a moment, like when you see this piece of like, I'm beautiful, the narcissist oftentimes is trying to pump you up, to put you on a pedestal. To be able to say, hey, this is what's going on in this moment. Let me get you to a place where you're viewing and believing and thinking a certain thing. And then that th that's the thing that turns around and he ends up holding against you. So the thing that he used to praise about you, the thing that he said he loved about you, then is the exact thing that he hates about you. Is then your biggest fault. Your biggest attribute, the biggest positive thing in the relationship now becomes the negative thing. The thing that he points out, you might have him say that you're soulmates. You might have him say that he's never felt this way in his life. Like this is the best thing ever. This is one of the hardest pieces for people to realize when they're inside a toxic relationship. Because oftentimes they will get stuck. They'll get stuck thinking, but it was, it was the best thing ever. I was so connected. I was so in love. This was amazing. When in reality, all of it was just a facade. It was just him putting on a show. It was him putting on a mask to be able to make you think and view the reality that actually wasn't there. So when you look at your relationship, I want you to consider, did you fall in love with a man or did you fall in love with a monster? It could be both. Simply because depending on the situation, depending on how he shows up, depending on the lies that he's telling himself and he's telling you, he's going to show up different each time. Different to you and different to outsiders. Different behind closed doors and different to other people in his life. So consider for a moment when you deal with this question, who have you actually fallen in love with? I want you to consider what are the actual facts of the situation? Like, what is actually real in your life right here, right now? Is he in your life right here, right now? Showing up, giving love, honor, support, respect, honesty. Or are you starting to believe a different reality that might not be 100% true? 
when my therapist said that, I didn't think it was going to be uh, th this huge positive thing, but I didn't think she was going to be so negative, right? Like maybe you're both. But it was a piece that jarred me a little bit to make me realize and think that there was a difference that I could make in my life if I chose to. And you have to understand the narcissist in your life, if he doesn't choose to make a decision for himself, if he doesn't choose to be different, you can't do anything. You can't manipulate him to it. You can't force him to it. You can't do anything except change you. You're the only one that can actually access transformation, that can actually move forward in your healing, growth, and development because he's not showing up. He's not willing to do so. But if you are, there's actually healing for you on the other side. There's actually hope for you on the other side of the negativity, of the frustration, of the trauma that you're going through right here, right now. I want to invite you to be able to learn a little bit more about this. So we're going to have a link down the bottom of the page that is going to take you to rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough. Here, I'm just going to talk to you just for a couple more minutes and just another video that I put together to be able to help you understand how I help liberate women from toxic relationships, how I help you rewire your mindset, get you out of the chaos, the confusion, the crazy making that you're in so that you can find clarity, confidence, and certainty in who you are and how to move forward. If this resonates with you today, then I want you to click the link below and move forward into rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough. Check out the video, see where you're at, see if it resonates. And if I can be of help to you today, I want you to be able to move forward. You're not crazy. You're not alone. And you're not helpless. Reach out for help.